Hey friends, here's the first Notan art we'll create in this video. It combines organic and geometric shapes together. And here's the second piece we'll create. This is a vignette with a Japanese motif. So exactly what is Notan art? Notan is a Japanese term that literally means light, dark, harmony. It seems that this art form is taught to grade school children, but I must have missed that day in art class. I recently discovered it, and I think it's fascinating. The general idea with Notan is that the light and dark elements are equally important. Notan art is generally created with paper. You start with a black square piece of paper and put it over a larger white square piece of paper. With Inkscape, we'll use the rectangle tool to make our black and white squares. Then in paper, the artist will use a light colored pencil to draw shapes on each edge of the black square piece of paper. In Inkscape, we'll make sure that our shapes have a light colored stroke, paint, and style. With paper, the artist will use a pair of scissors to cut out every single shape and save every single piece from the black square. In Inkscape, we'll achieve the same thing by using the Shape Builder tool. Finally, with paper, after rearranging the black shapes onto the white paper, the artist will use glue to keep everything in place. In Inkscape, we'll use snapping and grouping to achieve the same purpose. Let's go ahead and get started with our first example. I can right click anywhere to show you the document properties. I'm using a page size of 8 by 8 inches, and the page color is a dark gray. The first thing I want to do is turn snapping on. I'll grab the rectangle tool and draw a square that aligns to our page size. Using the selection tool, I'll come down and set the fill of this square to white, and I'll make sure I have no stroke by looking at the red X, and you can see that larger circle over the X. If you happen to have a stroke, just hold down the Shift key and click the red X. Now I'll use Control D to duplicate the white square, and I'll change its fill to black. Then I can go up to the dimensions at the top, change the unit of measure to inches. I can lock the proportions and change this to being a 4x4 four four square. Now I can shift select the white square so they're both selected, and I can align the black square to the middle of the white square. Okay, here are the shapes I've already prepared that we're going to use in this design, and I'll walk you through how I created each one of these combinations. We have two sets of geometric shapes, and then two organic shapes. So for this first one, I used the rectangle tool and Control and Shift to draw a perfect square. I'll get it to about the right size, and I'll come down and give it a yellow stroke by holding the Shift key and selecting the yellow swatch and making sure that my stroke style is one pixel wide. Now I want to use Path Object to Path to make sure that I can manipulate the nodes. So now if I use the Nodes tool, I can select the bottom right node and chop it off by deleting it. And there we have our triangle. Now I'll go back to the Selection tool, use Control D to duplicate this triangle, and then Shift and Control to reduce its size. Then I want to drag this smaller triangle into the middle of the larger one. Next I'll use the Star and Polygon tool and make sure that my corners for the star are six corners. Let's draw that star. I'll now use the Selection tool to drag it into place. If I click it a second time, I can rotate it the way I like, and then move it into the proper position. Finally, I can use the Ellipse tool and hold Control shift to draw a perfect circle, and then with the Selection tool, move that into place. OK, moving on to the next shapes, I'll draw another perfect circle. Then I'll grab the Rectangle tool again and draw a perfect square. Now with the Selection tool, if I click it a second time, I get the rotation handles, and by holding down the Control key, I can move it three clicks to rotate it 45 degrees. Now I can click it again and start dragging the edges to deform this into more of a tall diamond shape. I'll use Control D to duplicate it and drag it down underneath the other one. And then with snapping turned on, I'll link the two of them together. I'll use Shift Select and group the two of these guys together. Then I'll use Control D again to duplicate this and use the rotation tool at the top to rotate it 90 degrees. Now I can group both sets of these together. Then I'll use Shift Select on the circle 
and I'll align the diamonds to the center of the circle. Okay, that's done. Now let's move on to our organic shapes. I started these by using the ellipse tool to draw a kind of a tall ellipse. Then I gave it a slight rotation to the left. Then as before, I used path, object to path to get access to the nodes. Now I can play with the nodes and add new nodes and try to recreate the shape I did before. When I started, I had no intention of making it even look like a face, but that's what it turned out to be. And I won't torture you too long with my attempt here. It didn't go quite as planned, but oh well, you get the idea. When I realized I had something that looked kind of like a face, I made a perfect circle and popped it in there as the eyeball. Then I grouped it together, and to make the second one, I just used Control D, gave it a slightly different angle, and adjusted the nodes a bit to make it look just a little bit different. Okay, let's proceed, and I'm going to use the original designs that I had already prepared. We want to have shapes on each of the four edges of the black square. So I'll start by placing these heads on the left and the right of the black square. I want to fill as much of the black square as I can, while also leaving room for the other shapes that are going to be put on the top and the bottom. Anything that is outside of the black square will not be used. Now with the first geometric shape, I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. And then I want to flip it so that I can get most of it into the black square. I'll even turn snapping on so that I can get the base of the triangle to line up with the edge of the black square. Okay, I have the size correct. I've got it aligned to the black square. And now I can just use the arrow keys to get it into the right position. All right, let's take our second geometric shape and size it in such a way that I can get the majority of it into the black square. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's select everything in black and start using the Shape Builder tool. The idea now is to replicate cutting out these shapes with our scissors. So we'll select the head and the eyes. Now at the top, I want to join together the border of the triangle as well as the star and the circle. Remember, we don't need to select anything out of the black square, but we do need to select every shape that's inside the black square. I didn't mention it earlier, but if you want to join two shapes together that you see within the Shape Builder, you select one and drag the cursor into the other one. The final piece we need to select is all of the background within the black square. Now let's take a close look and make sure we didn't miss anything, and then we can go ahead and click the Finish button for the Shape Builder. Some of our yellow stroke lines got hosed up a bit, so I'm going to go back to the Stroke Style change it back to pixel and make sure everything is one pixel. Okay, here's where it starts to get fun. We'll drag one of the shapes that's aligned to the edge of the black square and drag it out to the left. Then we can flip it using one of the two flip tools at the top. We need snapping turned on so that we can connect this back to the original black square. So basically we have a reflection now between the white and the black. I like to zoom in to make sure the snapping worked the way I wanted it to. Now we can go ahead and remove the yellow stroke from the black shape on the outside and also on the inside with the eye. Let's go ahead and use the same process with the organic shape on the right. Now with the geometric shape on the top, I already joined together the triangle border and the star and the circle, so I can drag them all out together. I can flip them and I can snap them back into place on the outside of the black square. And again, I'll remove the yellow strokes. Now with the bottom geometric shape, I think I'll choose the area in between the diamonds and pull that out, flip it, align it back into place using the snapping, and again, remove the yellow strokes. Now to finalize the design, I want to select everything in black, and group it together. Then I can shift select the white square and align the black to the center of the white square. Oh, before I move it aside, I better make sure I group the whole thing together. Then I can move it aside and it's ready to be exported. If this were a Rorschach test, 
I think I would say the man on the left is talking about flying into outer space, and the woman on the right is talking about driving her Tesla. Who knows? Okay, let's move on to our second design, the Japanese vignette. I imported most of these shapes from Vectizi, where I searched for silhouettes of an owl, branches, a sun, a pond, a swan, and a Japanese building. Looking at the owl and the branch first, you can see I grouped them together. If I ungroup them, you can see the owl was a separate image. I just sized it appropriately to sit on the branch and then group them back together. When I'm using shapes that I didn't create myself, I like to test it with the Shape Builder tool to make sure everything can be selected as I hope. In this case, this looks fine. Now I found these nice sun rays and I swapped out the center with a couple of circles. When I test this with the Shape Builder tool, some of the rays are a darker gray than the others. When I start hovering over them, I see that two of them are connected together, and one of them is actually connected to the circle in the center. So this will not work for me. I tried all kinds of things to resolve this situation, and I didn't find anything wrong with these particular shapes. I did some research and found out that a workaround is to have a line intersect the shapes that are giving us the problems. So let's try that. I decided to draw a perfect circle that's big enough to intersect with all of the sun rays, and I lined it up to the center of the sun, and then dropped it to the back, and grouped everything together. Okay, I can see this resolved the issue with the rays, but now I have a new issue with the interior of the sun. So the next thing I'll do is just draw a straight stroke line that intersects the circles in the middle of the sun and see if that takes care of the issue. All right, let's try the Shape Builder tool again. And lo and behold, I can select every shape the way I want to. Now, if any of you have seen this kind of issue before and you know of a better solution, please let me know in the comments below. Let's check out the pond now. I traced these out myself and there is no problem when I'm using the Shape Builder tool. Let's check out the swan and there's no problem here either. And let's check out the Japanese building. And again, the Shape Builder tool is not recognizing the windows and the gaps on either side. So I'll use the same workaround of drawing a straight line through the windows at the top and all of the openings on the bottom. I'll group it all together and use the Shape Builder tool again to see if it worked. And sure enough, now we're in good shape. Uh, no pun intended. All right, let's go through the same process we used for the first design. We'll move everything into place on its respective edge of the black square. And I will speed up the video because it's all the same as before. It's just very interesting how this one turns out. You'll see with the sun that I'm aligning the middle of the sun to the edge of the black square so that when I flip the inside of it, it'll be perfectly symmetrical. When sizing the owl and the branches, I wanted to make sure I left enough room for the pond and the swan at the bottom. And when positioning the swan, I wanted to be cognizant of the feathers and the tail and make sure that they would be visible against the background. Don't forget if you do something incorrect with the Shape Builder tool, just use Control Z to undo that particular item and keep moving forward. As you're flipping shapes, you may find along the way that it pays to group items together that belong together to make it easier to flip them and snap them back into place.
and we have our finished piece. How cool is that? Hey, thanks for watching. I really enjoyed creating the Notain art for this video, and I hope it inspires you to create some yourself. I do have a couple of ideas that I'd like to pursue in the future. I'm thinking of putting half of a balloon on the left side of the paper, another half on the right side, some clouds at the top, and maybe a landscape at the bottom to see how that turns out. Then when I mirror the other halves of the balloons, I'll have two full hot air balloons. That should be cool. I'm also thinking about making three word symbols out of no tan art where I leave the bottom of the page unused of the square. So for example, always be positive. I could put a bumblebee at the top of the square. I could put a, the positive end of a battery at the right side. And then for always, I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe I'll ask ChatGPT. So if you are inspired to do some of this, I'd love to see the work that you do. If you want to send it in to me with an email, I could possibly share it with the group in another video. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.